Something familiar, something peculiar, something for everyone, a comedy tonight. Something appealing, something appalling, something for everyone, a comedy tonight. Nothing for kings, nothing for crowns. Bring on the lovers, liars, and clowns. You're listening to Comedy on NPIR Old Time Radio. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. with a brief reminder. Mystery Play Internet Radio is listener supported, so I encourage your monetary support with a donation today. Please visit www.mpir.com dash otr.com and click on the donations page a one-time donation of any amount will be greatly appreciated again that's www.mpir-otr.com and thank you for listening to mystery play internet radio the johnson wax program with fibber mcgee and molly of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. a prediction. But I'd be willing to bet that within the next few days, we receive a good many letters from listeners making the same suggestion about how to take better care of shoes. And though I've mentioned it to you before, I think it's very timely to remind you again that genuine Johnson's Wax, either paste or liquid, is a wonderful protection for shoes, boots, luggage, and all things made of leather. It keeps the leather soft and pliable, moisture resistant, makes it wear longer, resists scuffing, and of course greatly improves its appearance. Keep some Johnson's Wax handy for use as a shoe polish. All the members of your family will have use for it. This is just one of many uses for genuine Johnson's Wax, besides its major uses for protecting floors, furniture, and woodwork. Wax is a real help in the battle of conservation, and its cost is negligible. It's one of life's little puzzles that a busy executive who gets a half ton of mail every morning never gets excited about it. But to people who never get anything but a couple of circulars, a few bills, and an occasional postcard, the arrival of the morning mail is a pretty hot moment. For instance, take Fibber McGee and Molly. Liz, I wish that mailman would get here. He's ten minutes late this morning. Oh, take it easy, dearie. The way you watch for the mailman every morning, anybody would think you were selling hay for the Pony Express. <laughs> now, gee whiz, you never know what you'll get in the mail. You remember I got an important letter last week. What was that? Well, it was confidential, but you remember I showed you the return address on the envelope from the White House. Yeah, and I saw it on your dresser later. It was from the White House Hamburger Hut at 14th and Oak Street. <laughs> And they said, thank you for, for your patronage, but from now on, they weren't open on Tuesdays. <laughs> what are you doing reading my mail, anyway? Well, it was addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Fibber McGee. I'm Mrs. McGee, remember? I was the girl in the white dress you married with. Okay, okay. <laughs> Mailman ain't got any right to be so late. I got a good mind to report him to Jim Farley. Why not? And if that doesn't get results, go right over his head to the president, Grover Cleveland. <laughs> You're kidding, but I'm serious. I'm a busy man, and when my morning mail is delayed... Busy I... doing what? Well, I... Well, how do I know what I'm doing till I get my mail? That's the very point I'm trying to make. Hit, hit. There he is now. There's the mailman. Sure. The circular from the Bijou Theater and two blotters from some real estate agent. I can hardly wait. Open the door, McGee. 
Now, look here, bud. If you can't get the mail here on time... Oh, excuse me, sis. <laughs> I thought you were the mailman. I am the mailman. Heavenly day. <laughs> A lady mailman. Gee. Say, I hope Mr. Underwood isn't ill. No, madam. Mr. Underwood is now in the Army. I will bring your mail for the duration. Well, what do you know? <laughs> One of these days, this country is going to have just two classes of people, soldiers and women. <laughs> Not a bad idea, either. Anything for us this morning, mailman, or uh, postwoman, or uh, dearie? Here it is, Mrs. McGee. You are Mrs. McGee, I presume. Oh, you caught me red-handed with my wedding ring on. How do you like being a mailman, sis, as far as you've gone? I like it, except for the dogs. Yes, I imagine your feet do get a little tired by the dog. <laughs> by dogs, I mean dogs. Canines. Big ones, little ones, medium ones, large ones, quiet ones, white ones, black ones, tan ones. And they all snap at me. What do you do about me to make dogs want to bite me? <laughs> Gee, I don't know, sis, but I bet if I was a dog... McGee! Oh, okay. <laughs> It isn't too, dearie. All dogs get nervous when they see someone carrying a big package or a big bag. It's the mail sack that gets them, not you. Well, that's a comfort, because I like dogs. But I've been barked at, snapped at, rushed at, chewed at, snarled at, jumped at, and growled at, so I feel like a bargain. Have you got a dog? No. <laughs> well, I'm in civil service. If you want me to stay civil and give you service, don't get a dog. <laughs> I wonder what the official title of a lady mailman is. Baguette? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the poor girl. I suppose she'll get used to it, though, or the dogs will get to know her better. I'm going to miss old Underwood, though, the regular mailman. He didn't smoke. Maybe this girl doesn't smoke either. I know, but who's going to give her cigars for Christmas that she can give me? <laughs> What's in the mail? Here. Hmm. Here's an ad from the Whistle Vista Physical Culture Saloon. That salon. Uh, Same thing. <laughs> bending elbows with a bunch of dumbbells. <laughs> what are they advertising? Listen. Course of 20 lessons starting February 22nd. You can't buy tires and shoes are rationed. Let us teach you to walk on your hands. <laughs> Is there any other mail as important as that? No. Hey. What? That dumb male girl left a letter here by mistake. Anybody in this neighborhood named Householder? No, I don't think... Let me see that letter. <laughs> oh, this says Householder, 79 Whistle Vista. I know, but we don't know anybody by that name. And Why, what... you silly. It means whoever lives here. The people who hold the house. Oh, well, don't open it. Just forward it to the FHA. <laughs> no, it means us, dearie. It's a government circular. Let me see it. Hmm. Uncle Sam wants workers with special skills. If you are a tack welder, flanging press operator, plate hanger, mixer operator of explosives, or outside machinist, or are skilled in any similar work, please report to your nearest United States Employment Service office now. Wow. What on earth is a tack welder? Hmm. Personally, if I break a tack, I just throw it away. <laughs> Probably nobody knows what a tack welder is but another tack welder. <laughs> fact remains that the government needs them in war production. You hear anything about this on the radio? Our radio is out of order, dearie. They're sending a man over to fix it sometime today. They said that they... Come in. Hello there, kids. Want to see something pretty? Oh, hi, old-timer. What you got? <laughs> Looky. For Miguel. Heavenly days, a diamond ring. Why, it's beautiful. Yeah, that's terrific, old-timer. But what makes it look so yellow? That's what I asked the fellow in the pawn shop, Johnny. He says that's an account of there's so many carrots in it. <laughs> Are you and your girl really getting engaged? Well, we really got engaged last night, daughter. Kathy was sitting on my lap in front of the fireplace. She had the lights turned down kind of low, and I said, Bessie, I says, and she says, yes, Whitley. <laughs> Who's Whitley? That's me, Johnny. <laughs> anyway, that's what I told her my name was. Oh. <laughs> I call her Olga. I thought her name was Bessie. No, it is. Oh, Olga's kind of a nickname I started. But why do you tell her your name was Whitley? Well, if you're going to be nosy about it, Johnny, the only engagement ring I could afford was in this here pawn shop and had an inscription in it that says, To Olga from Whitley. <laughs> well, just want you to see the ring. I'll invite you to the wedding, kids. Thank <laughs> you.
plate hangers or tack welders or outside machinists for the government if you don't even know what they are, McGee. Chuck, I don't have to know what they are. If you were an expert plate hanger and you were temporarily clerking in a bird store and you heard somebody say Uncle Sam was hungry for plate hangers, that's all that's necessary, isn't it? I'm going to spread the word around, that's all. And if I can find just one and get him working at war production, I'll be as proud as a pewter pigeon. <laughs> you mean potter pigeon, dearie, made out of pottery. I do not. I mean one of them putter pigeons that putters around on the windowsill. <laughs> And who ever heard of a putty pigeon? I didn't say putty pigeon. You said pewter. Well, what's pewter? It's a mug. That's what I says. I'd feel like a mug if I don't find the government to the tackle. And besides that... I'll get it. Whoever it is, ask them, did they ever work as an outside machinist? 79 Whistle Vista, Come on, McGee speaking. Who? Oh, hello, Abigail, darling. I was wondering... What? Why, isn't that terrible? But I'm sure McGee wouldn't think of doing such... Yes, I know, Abigail, but... Oh, no, I'm positive. I... Well, you two may have your little arguments, but after all, when it comes to doing such a cruel... Oh, no, Abigail, no, no. I'm just as sure as I'm standing here that McGee had absolutely nothing to do with it. Yes. Goodbye, Abigail, dear. McGee. Huh? What was the idea of sending Abigail up into that insulting comic valentine? <laughs> Who, me? I didn't send her any comic valentine. Well, I wish I'd have thought of it. Well, she's simply furious. Are you sure you didn't have anything to do with it? Molly, I give you my word as I stand here wondering whether to spend my next coupons for sugar or shoes. <laughs> whether to go barefoot or hungry. Or whether to... Well, hello, folks. Mind if I come in? Oh, do, Mr. Wilcox, do. Do we mind if he comes in? He reminds me of the doctor who was going to operate on the dancer for appendicitis. Mind if I cut in, he says. <laughs> Hey, Harlow. Yeah? You ever do any tack welding or plate hanging? I don't know. What is it? Oh, we don't know either, but the government wants very badly to get in touch with tack welders and plate hangers. And uh, what were those other things, McGee? Well, here's the circular. Flanging press operators, mixer operators of explosives, outside machinists, and people familiar with similar skilled work. Ever do any of that stuff like that there, Junior? No. Nope. No, nope. but I got a cousin in Milwaukee that's a pretzel bender. Well, I'm afraid bending pretzels is no great contribution to the war effort, Mr. Wilcox. Haven't you any special skills at all? Oh, sure. I'm a whiz-bang on the subject of preserving things with Johnson's Wax, on how to feel wood and leather in enamel surfaces against dirt and wear and dust and dampness, on how Johnson's Wax not only saves things, but gives them a new luster and a new beauty. That makes an old chair or cabinet gleam with pride. That makes housework so much easier by... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'll but bet look. there isn't a guy in the country that can tell you more uses for Johnson's Wax in a house than I can. <laughs> Windowsills, lampshades, luggage, floors, furniture, shoes. Oh, baby, shoes! Now, there, we got something. Did you know Mr. that... Mr. Wilcox, yeah? one more question. Did you send Mrs. Uppington a comic valentine? <clears throat> Certainly not. I never send anybody comic valentines. I think they're brutal. Did she get one? She got one, Junior, and she thought I sent it. 
She was ready to come raging over here and beat my skull in with my own clavicle. <laughs> on the phone and she was really loaded for moose, Mr. Wilcox. I'm afraid I didn't succeed in convincing her that McGee didn't send that valentine either. Well, you haven't convinced me either. Oh, yeah? You really think I'm the type of guy that deliberately hurts people's feelings by sending them insulting valentines? Suppose I meet somebody who's a tack welder or one of those other specials. <laughs> What's that? You just tell him to report right away to the nearest U.S. Employment Service. Well, Cox, you didn't answer my question. What question was that, pal? You think I'm the type guy to send people comic valentines. Frankly, pal, I think you're not only the comic valentine type, but the squirting flower in the coat lapel type. <laughs> the chewing gum on the doorknob type. The look through the telescope and get a black eye type. And last but not least, the bomb that goes off when you start your car type, and I'll let you know if I find any plate hangers. Well, Mr. Wilcox has a very low opinion of your wit and humor, <laughs> McGee. Imagine that. And me that hasn't had a buttonhole flower that squirts <laughs> water for years. <laughs> Wonder where I could get one. No, could... no. Stop it now. First thing I know, you'll start pulling chairs out from under people as they go to sit down. I will not. That's something even I don't think is funny. And you know why? Why? Because the last time I did that to a guy, he slugged me. <laughs> You ever hear me speak of Fred Nittany of Star Rock, Illinois? Yeah. Well, sir, Fred Nittany was the guy that did it. He, we, 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 hey, hand me my cigar box, will you? Here. Thanks. As I was saying, this Fred Nittany and me... McGee, I wish you'd let that musical humidor run down. I'm getting tired of it. Me too. I just keep it wound up as a health measure. I'm getting so I smoke a lot less because I hate to open that box. <laughs> but about this Fred Nittany, one day we were out... Oh, dear. Come in. Well... Oh, dear. Hi, La Trivia. Hey, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Oh, my, isn't this nice? Mayor La Trivia. Thank you, Mrs. McGee. But it isn't Mayor La Trivia anymore, you know. It's just plain Coast Guard from La Trivia. Oh, you certainly look wonderful in your sailor suit. Molly, please, not sailor suit. That sounds sissy. They call them costumes. <laughs> We call them no such thing, McGee. They're uniforms. Oh, yeah, uniforms. <laughs> My goodness, they just take wonderful care of you. You look simply grand. Well, I feel fine, Mrs. McGee. I'm on leave with a bunch of Coast Guardsmen who've just completed a course in Japanese anatomy at Guadalcanal. Oh, what do you know about that? Took off a little weight, didn't you, Latrivia? Oh, I've taken it off in some places and added it in others, McGee. I have two inches more around the chest and three inches less around... Don't sit down, Mr. Latrivia. <laughs> Thank you. Well, now, tell us all about it. How are they feeding you? Splendidly, splendidly, Mrs. McGee. I hope you and McGee can come and visit our base one of these days. Southern Section Training Base at San Clemente, California. We're very proud of it. Our commanding officer, Lieutenant Howard Kebley, is really turning out sailors there. Uh, think you can pay us a visit? I'd love to, wouldn't you, McGee? Sure. The fact is, Miss Trivia, I might be getting down that way myself now, any day now, myself. Being a government man myself, I have you. You, a government man? Tell Mr. Latrivi all about your government work, McGee, and loud, because it's news to me, too. <laughs> what do you mean, news to you? I'll tell you how it is, Latrivia. The government notified me just today by mail that they want me to locate a lot of tack welders for them. Of course, you know what a tack welder is, of course. Oh, well, certainly. What? You do? <laughs> Why, yes, don't you? Well, uh, no. The, the government didn't ask me to train them. All I got to do is find them. <laughs> is a tack welder, Mr. Latrivia. Well, I may be wrong, Mrs. McGee, but I think it's a welder who simply tacks pieces of metal together by welding temporarily until they can be permanently welded together. Well, what do you know? How do you learn all of that stuff, Latrivia? Well, the Navy gives you a pretty complete education, McGee, and the Coast Guard joins the Navy in wartime and fights wherever the Navy and Marines fight. Oh. But I was saying just the other day to my executive officer, Chief Lancio. Chief uh, Lancio? What is he, an Indian? <laughs> no. In the Coast Guard, Chief means Chief Petty Officer. Oh, you see, I was Excuse telling... me, but uh, how long will you be in town? How long a furlong have you got? You don't mean a furlong, Molly. A furlong is a horse. <laughs> a furlong is not a horse, McGee. It's a distance. Oh, you mean furlong is quite a ways, like a fur piece. <laughs> I tell you, a furlong is a horse. You've seen it on racing programs. This race is for seven furlongs. That means there's seven horses in the race. 
Oh, don't be ridiculous, McGee. A furlong is 220 yards or one-eighth of a mile. A likely story. Who ever heard of a horse an eighth of a mile long? Stop arguing, dearie. You haven't seen all the horses in the world. If Mr. Latrivia says there are horses that long, I believe him. But I didn't say that. I merely said... Oh, I was trying to back out of it, eh? Now look here, Latrivia. I'm not trying to back out of anything. I just said that a furlong was an eighth of a mile. Well, if that isn't a long horse, I never saw one. <laughs> but I didn't say it was a horse. I'm not that stupid by a long shot. A horse an eighth of a mile long wouldn't be any long shot, Mr. Trivia. He'd be a sure thing. He'd be halfway around the track before the other next... But I tell you what I was talking about horses. I merely said that a furlong was an eighth... I mean, a furlong was when a service man. How about a horse? A furlong flying from a payload? <laughs> McGee... As long as you're a government man, please use your influence to send me to Tunisia or New Guinea or someplace. Where a man can see what he's fighting. Goodbye! <laughs> the King's Men sing Fill the Flute is Ball. Fill the flute throughout the town of Barleymook. All the times to go, the harvest him. In fact, the man was broke, so he just stood out to notice to his neighbors one and all. But how he'd like a company that ain't an edible. When he wrote to the people, he was careful to suggest to them that if they found a hat of his convenient to the door. Well, the more they put in, whenever he requested them, the better would the music be for bothering the floor. With a toot of the flute and a twiddle of the fiddle, all hopping in the middle like a heron on the grill. Whoop, down. Hands around, cut off to the wall. Sure, you got to pay the piper. Yes, you got to pay the piper when he tools on the flute. So all joined in with the greatest joviality, and digging in their pockets with the jingle mighty sweet. Jigs were danced of the very finest quality. Mickey and the widow danced the others off the beat. Well, the of the flute and the fiddle on the fiddle, oh, we're hopping in the middle like a heron on the griddle. Up, down, hands around, across and through the wall. Oh, hands with the gaiety, the gaiety, the gaiety, hands with the gaiety. Hey, did you say there was supposed to be a guy coming over to fix this radio today, Molly? Yes, but don't get impatient, dearie. Everybody's hard to help these days, you know. No, that's no excuse. A government man like me ought to get priority on radio repairs. With me busy rounding up skilled workers for war production, you think that I ought to be able to get it? Oh, maybe that's him now. Come in. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Oh, hi, Wimp. Hello, Mr. Wimple. How are you today? Oh, I feel just peachy, Mrs. McGee. But then I should. I've just finished up my setting up exercises. Setting up exercises? Yes. I've been setting up in the attic waiting for tea to go outside. <laughs> she hunted all over the house for me, and she couldn't find me. She never thought of looking up the chimney. What were you hiding for, Mr. Wimple? Oh, sweetie face was mad at me. Somebody sent you an awfully nasty valentine. She thought I did it. Mm -hmm. Who did send it? <laughs> I did. Mean. I hope it wasn't you who sent one to Mrs. Uppington. Oh, no, Mrs. McGee. I wouldn't do anything like that. I'm very fond of Mrs. Uppington. You mean you think more of her than you do of your own wife? Well, times. <laughs> what times? Old oh, times like from when 
cheesecake and I made up till now. Say, how are you getting along with your bodybuilding exercises, Miss Wimple? Just one thing, Mrs. McGee. Cheesecake says if I keep it up, I'm going to look like that man on the back of the magazine. You mean Charles Atlas? Yes. Cheesecake considers me an Atlas even now. Oh, she does? Yes. She tried to shove me into the top shelf of the bookcase this morning. <laughs> Mr. Wimple, I really don't the way that woman treats you. She's a horrible woman. Oh, you mustn't talk about sweet things like that, Mrs. McGee. Oh, nobody can hear us. You sure? Sure. All right. Then let's all talk about it. <laughs> Look, Mr. Wimple, why don't you leave home and get a job as a... Uh... Uh, what were some of those jobs, McGee? Oh, he hasn't had any training in them, Molly. There's a, there are skilled labor jobs. You ever had any experience in plate hanging with? Oh, yes, indeed. Oh. Just this morning, Cutie Face hung a plate on me that almost... <laughs> no, no, that's one of the jobs that's needed in war production, Miss Wimple. You see... Oh, do you have to go? Uh, yes, I'm afraid so, Mrs. McGee. Cutie Face is due home any minute now to start dinner, and I left the gas turned on in the kitchen. The house is simply full of gas fumes. Why, she's liable to blow herself to pieces. <laughs> yeah. You know, McGee? Huh? Sometimes I think that Wallace and Sweetie Bates aren't happy together. Oh, that's just your imagination. If I ever saw two perfectly mated people... It's... Oh, dear. Come in. Uh, you people call for a radio repairman? Oh, yeah, right in here, bud. Now, uh, here's the radio right here, sir. I turned it on yesterday and nothing happened. And I do hate to miss Vic and say if I can possibly hear... Oh, the there's nothing serious wrong, lady. Ah, there you are. It's working now. Two dollars, please. <laughs> Two dollars? Well, that's fast work. Well, here you are, bud. You must be an expert radio man. You've been doing this stuff long? Oh, no, no. I'm just helping out my brother-in-law. I see. I always worked as a tack welder myself, uh -huh. but my brother-in-law got sick a year or so ago, and I've been helping him out ever since. He don't need me now, but I just go along and... Hey, uh, uh, what was the matter with the radio in case it happens again? Oh, well, in case it happens again, lady, stick the plug back in the wall socket. Call me any time, <laughs> Goodness sakes, $2 for sticking the plug back in the wall, son. What a jit. That guy's got no business in the radio repair business. He ought to go back to his tack welding work. Did I say tack welding? Hey, he's a tack welder. He's one of those guys. One side mouth. Hey, what? Come back here. I'm a bad one, Hey, tack welder. floors wearing as well as you expected? Have you done anything to give it extra protection right now? Do you realize that you can make linoleum actually wear six to ten times longer by protecting it regularly with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat? If your program for taking better care of the things you have doesn't include glow coat on your linoleum floors, you're missing an important and a very easy way to practice conservation. Self-polishing glow coat takes very little work because it polishes itself without rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let dry. It protects linoleum surfaces against wear of all time, against minor scratches, scuffing, and color fading. Glow coat makes floor surfaces sparkle with beauty. And that's important, too, because it makes your kitchen a pleasanter room to work in. Ladies and gentlemen, no fooling, the government does need skilled workers in the lines we've been talking about. I'll repeat them again. Tack welders, flanging press operators, plate hangers, mixer operators of explosives, outside machinists, and people with similar skills. If you can do any of these things and aren't in war production work at this time, do your country a good turn and report to your nearest U.S. Employment Service office. Skilled workers in Canada, check with your governmental employment officers. Don't forget... It's your sons of toil that'll help put those Nazis under tons of soil. Good night. Good night, all. Characters of the old 
Bill Thompson and Wallace Winkle heard on this program were played by Bill Thompson. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for the Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This program reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.